I believe this was my dad's favorite song. I trust in God wherever you may be upon the land or on the raging sea for come what may from day to day my heavenly father watches over you just trust in the God again just I'll trust in, in God, God. song our late dad wrote and we're going to think do it in three languages i am so glad that jesus took my sins away all right hallelujah i am so glad that jesus took my sins away he took my sins away he took my sins away so glad that Jesus took my sins away. He took my sins away. Chapula, Chapula, Jesus, Jesus took my sins. That Jesus took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. I am so glad that Jesus took my sins away. He took my 
Praise the Lord. Tonight we're going to come before the Lord and continue to worship with our giving. How many know giving is worship? It's one of the highest forms of worship. He says, because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Somebody's, some people's treasure is elsewhere. Our treasure is in heaven. Our treasure is our Lord. Amen. And so we're going to ask you to prepare. Our ushers are preparing. And if you're making out a check, just simply make it out to Love's Way, Love's Way Church. And we're going to be sure to be a blessing uh, to this conference. Amen. How many has enjoyed, I mean seriously, enjoyed this conference thus far? You, you received a blessing. You were blessed. You were blessed. And I know God has just begun such a wonderful thing in the lives of people. We're so excited. I was standing on a Monday morning in the back and they were teaching and all of a sudden I felt the Lord touch my heart concerning giving because there were so many needs and I said Lord meet the needs of your people and one of the things that I felt the Lord say to me was if you give ask the people to give or to sow equal to the size of their need if you have a small need you don't need much from the Lord well then your giving is not going to be impressive that's okay because he says with the same measure a man meets that's how he's going to return unto us but I believe if your need is big you need a breakthrough you need to sow a seed equal to the size of your need you determine what that is and God obviously knows what that is and I believe he will bless us I want to say thank you my wife and I God is privileged we're so honored to pastor most wonderful church in all the world right here at Love's Way. I thank God for the most incredible people. I hope you've been blessed. I want to thank God for our ushers. Have you been blessed by our ushers and, and greeters? Have they greeted you with a warm smile? That's what we live for. I mean, that's what we, our aim is. That everybody who walks through these doors, they feel at home. That's why our sign says, Welcome Home. And we really put emphasis on that. We want to live up to that. So as we give, prepare right now. Guys, have you got a good song? You got to get, you got to get that unmuted, Daniel. I think unmuted. So yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So come on, as we give unto the Lord. So we see our breakthrough life right now. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Chris. that you would pour it back into our bosom your word says good measure shaken together pressed down I thank you Lord for the blessings that overtakes your people they've come before you with a gift in their hands Father I know they will not walk away empty bless in every portion every area of their lives 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God say amen. Are you ready for the word of God tonight? Without any further, we don't want to take any more time. I'm ready. Our ushers are receiving this right now. But I want you to help me make welcome our brother, one of the seven. Some say he's the handsomest. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all, y'all be nice. But I know he's anointed of God, a man with faith in God. George, you got to come share some testimony or two also. Would you help me make welcome George McGregor, man of God, minister the word. Amen. Well, okay, come on, give him one more clap offering. We honor God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Johan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, church. What an awesome presence of God in this house. And uh, also the great responsibility on us uh, to deliver the Word of God. Uh, I, Pastor, has already uh, expressed thanks. And I see there's servants of God in this house. Pastors, Pastor Bill and Dot Trober. And, and if I don't mention your name, don't throw a fit. But uh, so glad to have you in God's house this here this evening. Uh, some came, as Pastor said, a long, long way just to be here. And we are grateful. We are grateful. First of all, I want to I wanna say thank you for all of you that came and made this few days a tremendous success. Tremendous. Every morning, this house was packed people. And we saw the passion uh, of, of, of the ministry and, and everything that's been done. And that, but I, personally, what you just, I just want to say thank you to the bishop and apostle of this house. Your pastor, my brother, Johan McGregor. Thank you. Thank you. He felt led of the Lord to put this thing together, and we honor that. And we also want to say thank you to the First Lady, uh, which is Elise, uh, Johan's wife. Thank you. Uh, the leadership here of Love's Way, y'all doing a phenomenal job. I'm just ra- running again what, what Johan said. But thank you, y'all, just phenomenal and amazing people. Uh, I, Johan's twin brother, somewhere in the building. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the chairs, I mean, the guy's so particular with the chairs, how, and they measure with the measuring the tape and everything has got to be perfect. My goodness, the type of, the type of people that's in this house, you, 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 uh, just the quality people. God bless you for, for who you are. And, and all my brothers uh, that are here this evening, Gershon preached a dyna- dynamic sermon uh, one night here about the packages. Uh, we had uh, Bishop Owen that preached, uh, was it Sunday night, at, a, a woman that had loosed a phenomenal message. Greg, the other evening here, preached uh, some perspective. And we had uh, Manuel minister, a uh, powerful word on the condition of the church in the state. And uh, Brother Roy last night blew the top of the thing. And uh, m- Sunday morning, Pastor Johan delivered a phenomenal service, a sermon. And so, uh, hmm, you come and preach here after these guys have preached. Uh, we'll see if it will be easy. But uh, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. So, glad to have my sons here, uh, Warren and Mr. Grant Ross. Yeah, he's the guy... Uh, uh, <clears throat> That did the worship here with the team. And, and we are blessed. We are blessed. Thank you for Cecilia. And everybody, if we do, God bless you all. Come, let's go to the Word of God, shall we? And see what God has in store for us. Don't want to keep here all night. Uh, but so, so glad that you would come to God's house. Thank you for believing in what we are doing uh, in, the, in the ministry. And, and I must say this. I've, I've, uh, I've noticed something about you folks. Many of you, you don't talk much. But I, I, I sense that you are very sensitive. Many of you are sensitive to the voice of Almighty God. And that takes a special kind of person. It's a person that lives close to God, that hears his voice. And thank you for your sensitivity. God bless you. God bless you. I want to ask if you'd go with me and read a text here from the book of Acts. The book of Acts. <clears throat> Acts 27. Acts 27. Now, yeah, sometimes we, we say a little few things that's kind of light, but uh, there's no time for that uh, right now that I feel. So Acts 27, and I want to most probably just pick up a few verses of scripture, start reading it from verse 9, if you would. And uh, most, yeah. now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul 
admonish them. If you want to know more about the fast that Paul is talking about, it's found in Leviticus 23, 27. And uh, verse 10 goes down there, it says, and said unto them, Paul is speaking to everybody that's on the ship that's with him. He says, sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only uh, of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. That lading is the cargo that they were carrying. And, and, but he says, nevertheless, the centurion, uh, sorry, nevertheless, the uh, yes, centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. I want to go down to verse 21. It says, but after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, he should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete. And to have gained this harm and loss. But now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. In other words, nobody will die. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as I was told, as it was told me. <laughs> Can I go to 41. I think so. And after, fa and after falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. 44. And the rest on some boards and some of the broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Nobody died. Now let's go over to chapter 28. 1 through 6 if you would. And then when, when they escaped, and they knew that, they were, that, that the island was called Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled the fire and received us, everyone, because of the, of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat. And fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand. They said among themselves. No doubt this man is a murderer. And though he, thought, though he hath escaped the sea. Yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire. And felt no harm. Verse 6. How bait they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. I've read the word in the hearing of your people, sir. My prayer tonight is you hide and guide me behind the cross. Father, I pray that you help me. If I ever needed you, then it is now. I pray every word I speak, let it be seasoned with the anointing. I ask this for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 A little summary of what this is all about. If you have never been through anything in life, then this message won't mean much to you. Hmm. This is only for people that knows that it is a miracle of God that you are still here tonight. Hmm. 
So I titled the thought, it should have killed you. It should have killed you. How many of us in this house here tonight have ever tried to look back over our lives and realize that it was only by the grace of Almighty God that we have lived this long? You've watched him on TV. There's a rabbi X, X10 or something that takes food somewhere to Russia to those Jewish people that escaped the Holocaust. I don't know how old they were, but anyway, he just died the other day. 67 years old. There's some of us that's a little older than that. I'm a little older than that. And it's a miracle that we're still here. <sighs> Many of us realize there has been car wrecks. We know of drugs and gang violence and drownings and so many other circumstances have taken the lives of those that's, that we've been acquainted with. We know of people that's gone through stuff like that. Some of you here right now even, you know that if it wasn't for the grace of Almighty God, you would have died in that automobile wreck. But it was for the grace of God. You, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd be spending your life behind prison walls. <laughs> or you could uh, be the one who died of a drug overdose. Many times we look at people on the streets and we look at them despisingly with a kind of down looking down on them. But somebody said, but for the grace of God, there go I. So let's get back to the message this evening here with the Apostle Paul. Advising them not to sail. But you know that in verse 10 of 27 of the book of Acts. It says. Uh, uh, it talks there. How many of you know that it, uh, we don't always listen to wise counsel? <laughs> we could have saved ourselves a lot of grief and pain. Had we listened to those who tried to instruct us. <laughs> but verse 11 tells you. That they didn't listen. I guess because of their stiff necks and rebellion. And they sailed, according to the scripture, directly into the storm of their lives. 18 and 19 verses of Acts uh, uh, 27, it says, and you'll read there later, it says that they lightened the ship. There's nothing like a bad storm for realigning priorities. Mm. You quickly find out what is needed, what is unnecessary, and what is excess baggage. The ship was destroyed, according to the scripture. But they made it to land on boards and broken pieces of the ship. Somebody in this house here this evening, you ought to lift your hands right about now and say, I'm going to make it. Come on, look at, come on, say it again. Tell yourself, I'm going to make it. Some of you ladies, you ought to have, some of you girls, you ought to have that kind of thing. You know how you ladies do that thing, kind of wag your little finger? That's how you got to tell the devil, man, I'm going to make it. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I may be broken, but I'm coming. <laughs> Wounded, but I'm still coming. <laughs> Bleeding, but I'm coming. <laughs> Crying, but I'm coming. <laughs> Confused, but I'm still coming. <laughs> Rejected, but I'm coming. Ostracized, but I'm coming. Criticized, but I'm coming. I've been dealt some heavy blows in life, but I'm coming. The wind has been knocked out of my sails, but I'm coming. You may say, George, you may say, George, uh, I, I know I'm not everything I should be, man. Uh, but I still struggle with some habits and some hang-ups. Uh, I still wrestle with some anger and some unforgiveness issues. I still I slip up so once in a while and I say things that I shouldn't say. I know I'm not where I ought to be, uh, but I know I'm moving in the right direction. <laughs> You may probably say, you know, I'm chopping water all around me because it's just because I don't want to drown, man. I'm chopping water all around me just because I don't want to give up. I don't want to fail. Uh, Acts 27, 44 in the scripture says that they all escaped safe to land. They made it. They made it. 
somebody in this house here this evening, you ought to lift your hand right about now and thank God that you made it through the storm. You ought to thank God that you made it through the storm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You made it through some disappointments. You've made it through that painful divorce. You made it through that pain, that heartbreak. You made it through those lonely nights. Mm -hmm. My God, I should have lost my mind. You should have lost your mind. It should have killed you, but you made it. It should have killed you, but you made it. Now you understand most of the things was our own fault. Was our own doing. You brought it on yourself. <laughs> but thank God he had mercy on you and me, amen. He had mercy and because he had mercy, you made it, you made it, you made it. <laughs> oh yeah. I know you, sh- you shouldn't have made it. You shouldn't have made it. You even shouldn't be here this evening. You shouldn't have made it through the storm. But I double dare you just to speak under your breath and tell the devil I'm still here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said he's got a foul breath, and I believe that. You ought to tell him here, you are still here. Hallelujah. See, his plan was to take you out. Mm, yeah. <laughs> They've made it through the storm. They made it through the storm and they landed on an island. The Bible tells us that the barbarians on that island began to kindle a fire with them. And the apostle Paul, instead of sitting there like a big shot, he gathered some sticks and he put it on the fire. And as he put those sticks on the fire, a viper came out of the heat and fastened on Paul's hand. I believe, I believe that God's plan for Paul was bigger than the snake. Mm -hmm. It was bigger than the snake. No, no, no. Scripture goes forward and it says, how bait ran about 28, Acts 28, ran about five and six around. Talks there about, he says, how bait they looked. Other words, to watch. To anticipate, to wait for. Do you understand that there are people that are watching you who do not want you to make it? You don't know about them? Keep coming to church. They're anxiously waiting and and, and anticipating your downfall. They rejoice when they see you going through hardships and trials. They get happy. There are people watching and waiting to celebrate your downfall. (sighs) It's not everybody that slaps you on the back and says, have a good day, want you to have a good day. Mm. They're waiting to celebrate your breakdown, your defeat. Mm. And when Paul should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, this means that they've seen this kind of thing happen before. And every time it happened, this was the end result. He should have swollen up or fallen dead suddenly. Medical science said you should have died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Every legal advisor says you should have died. Even natural circumstances says you shouldn't have made it. But God's plan for you is bigger than any problem you have. Your God-given destiny is greater than your problem. (laughs) I know it should have killed you. It should have killed you. You should be in a mental institution. Oh, you ought to be strung out on drugs tonight. You ought to be mad at God and mad at the world of all the things that's been happening to you. But I came to this house tonight to tell somebody that not only are you going to make it, but you're not even going to look like you've been through what you've been through when you get out on the other side. (laughs) 
When the children of Israel went through the Red Sea, God didn't just part the waters. He dried up the ground that they walked on. And when they reached the other side, there wasn't even mud between their toes. Mm -mm -mm. (laughs) And just for a little bit, it looked like the enemy was closing in on them. Mm -hmm. And it looked like the enemy was going to overtake them. (laughs) But they just kept on walking. (laughs) And while they were walking, God was taking care of their enemies. (laughs) While they were walking, their enemies were drowning. I want to tell somebody here today, just keep walking. Uh It doesn't matter what they say about you, keep walking. (laughs) It doesn't matter what they do, keep walking. It doesn't matter what the doctor says, keep walking. It doesn't matter what the rebellious child says, keep walking. It doesn't matter what the financial report says, keep walking. This is no place to sit down and cry and have and throw a little tantrum. Get up and keep walking. Hallelujah. And when God gets through blessing you, you won't even look like you've been through what you've been through. And the only evidence of you going through what you went through will be you'll have a greater faith. You'll have a greater love, a greater uh, confidence, a greater commitment, and you'll have a greater testimony. (laughs) Somebody here, somebody said, well, you don't understand, George, you don't understand. I'm going through hell with this marriage of mine. You don't understand, George, I'm going through hell with this job, this sickness, this financial struggle. I'm going through hell, being mentally abused, verbally abused, sexually abused, physically abused. Let me tell you, you ought to be, mm, you ought to be shouting right here and now. It should have killed me, but I made it. Come on, say it. It should have killed me, but I made it. Say it one more time. It should have killed me but I made it do you know what just happened (laughs) you just prophesied your victory you just prophesied your victory remember David said yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil Mm -hmm. let me tell you church you're going through because you're going to You're going through because you're going to. That ought to work out well on your Facebook page. Uh, Now let let me remind you, let me remind you. You're not the only one who has ever walked through the fire. Just in case you want to throw a little pity party. Remember the three Hebrew boys? Huh? Who walked through the fire. And when they came out on the other side. The only evidence. That they had being through. Going through the fire was. They were liberated. From their bondage. The only evidence that they went through the fire. They were liberated from the bondage. Bondage. The thing that the enemy has put on them. Got burnt off in the fire. They came out on the other side. With no hurt. Their clothes were not burnt. Their hair was not singed. And there was not even the smell of smoke on them. It should have killed them. It should have killed them. Well somebody said. Well you don't understand George. That God just took the heat out of the fire. Well, why didn't they tell that to those soldiers that got burnt up in that heat of that thing, in that furnace? Because the Bible says it killed them. I'm telling you something, that God doesn't always take the heat out of the fire, but he will walk with you through it. Sometimes we think, Coming to God, all your problems are solved. No. 
This thing, serving God, is not for weaklings. It's for men and women with a spine, with backbone. Mm. Trials will come. Trouble will come. Storms will come. Don't you understand that his sun shines on the just as well as on the unjust. His rain falls on the just as well as on the unjust. Just because you're a born again believer, you are not immune from the attacks of the enemy. But I want to let you know that victory is on your side. Hallelujah. Mm. I believe Brother Smith God is going to touch you tonight, my friend. He's been a friend of the, of the brothers for many, many years. Uh, can I say this? Dying of fourth, case, uh, uh, fourth stage cancer. God is going to heal him tonight. I believe that. I believe that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He doesn't take the heat out of the flame, but I want to let you walk with you through the fire. Hallelujah. He'll walk with you through it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know it should have killed him. <laughs> oh, so, 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 so. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let's get back to the Apostle Paul. The Bible says that Paul shook off that beast. I want to tell you, if you will keep your faith in Almighty God, God is going to bring you through. If you keep your faith in Almighty God, God is going to bring you through. And it says here that Paul shook off that beast. This wasn't a little wimpy wave of the hand. Come on, Mr. Snake. <laughs> Cecilia was trying to get a little snake for us. I couldn't find one, and I thought if I get one, I'll just throw it in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, we'll empty the house. <laughs> Even if it's a rubber thing, you'll run. <laughs> but here is this beast. The Bible calls it a beast. I wonder if it was a rattler. Something like venomous. <laughs> Attached itself. Paul didn't say, well, this ain't nice about you clinging on me. Would you please get off of my hand? Please remove your fangs from my, from, my, from my skin. That viper had attached itself to the apostle Paul. And he, Paul, had to become violent and aggressive against it. Uh, there are some things that you can pray about and ask God to take away. And then there are some things that you must become violent and aggressive against. Uh, I hope Pastor Johan will have me back because I'm going to talk about his family. I'm going to talk about his family. But he told it from his own mouth and you know about it. We're tra quite traveling quite a bit and the boys are getting bigger and Andrew, your associate pastor and youth worship leader, what a phenomenal guy that is. Ain't doing too great tonight. A little sick there with his flu business. But, uh, was a time when Andrew, I think, started growing up, and you know he's a he's quite a he's quite a buff guy, playing football, and he had three little hairs on top of the lip, and and uh, yeah, yeah, he's the man. He's just like, yeah, he's the man. And 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 Elise will tell him about stuff that Andrew's involved in, and Johan is not too pleased with that. And and, and one night I believe Johan came home about three o'clock from wherever he came on, and everybody's sleeping and snoring. I mean the floorboards is lifting the way they snore. And Johan walked into those boys' bedroom and started anointing those children, anointed their beds, the windows, the doorposts, everything. He opened the kitchen door and had a broom, and he started sweeping out. He says, "Devil." Get out of my house. Devil, get out of my house. And today you have Andrew as standing with his daddy and the rest of the guys too. There's a time in your life that you need to become angry and become violent toward the attacks of the enemy. Don't pussyfoot around with the devil. He ain't nobody of yours. He's your enemy. 
You got to shake that thing loose. You must shake like your life depends on it because it does. It does. It does. Shake that fear loose. Shake that depression loose. Shake the addiction loose. Shake your pride loose. Shake your hatred loose. It's time for you to shake unforgiveness loose. Shake that spirit of hopelessness and suicide loose. Shake the spirit of lust and perversion loose. Shake that spirit of poverty and lack loose. That spirit of sickness, shake it loose. Shake that spirit of dead, powerless religion loose. That self-righteous spirit, shake it loose in the name of Jesus. I think it's time that you shake for your family, shake for your health, shake for your mind, shake for your ministry, shake for your finances, shake, child of God, shake that stuff off. Samson, he said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself. This leads us to believe that there was some physical action on Samson's part that was a signal for the anointing. The anointing would come upon him as he shook. There's something about shaking that activates the anointing. But shaking is not all there is to it. You need to be close to the fire. See, there's a lot of people who shake. In other words, they go through the motions of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. But not many really have the fire. The fact that we've reached a place where we're, in fact, you know, we've reached a place. It's it's all over the the world almost, so to say. We we consider it old-fashioned. And outdated if we talk about the Holy Ghost and fire. But I still believe that the only thing that can destroy the devil's power is the fire of Almighty God. We still serve a God that answers by fire. (laughs) Paul shook that viper off into the fire. You need to ask yourself, are you living close enough to the fire? You need to ask yourself, is the fire in your church? You need to ask yourself, is the fire in your home? See, it should have killed me, but I shook it off. It should have killed me, but I got close to the fire and the fire delivered me. It should have killed the apostle Paul. They fully expected him to die, but he shook it off into the fire. It was the fire that destroyed the thing that was trying to kill the Apostle Paul. Somebody listening to me even right now. The devil has sent something out to try and destroy you. But it's not going to kill you because you're turning up the heat. Mm. Oh, come on now. Come on, just lean over to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, excuse me, but I've got to turn up the thermostat. Mm. Come on, tell somebody. Y'all don't talk to one another? My goodness. Uh, tell somebody, excuse me, but I've got to turn up the thermostat. Now, come on, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Oh, you might want to move. Tell them you might want to move to the other side of this room because I'm getting ready to praise like I've never praised before. Mm, Yeah, yeah. Tell him you ought to move because I'm getting ready to shout like I've never shouted before. I'm getting ready to worship like I've never worshiped before. You ought to tell him I don't have time trying to be cute. I haven't got time to try and fit in. Tell him I'm praising for my life. I'm praising for my destiny. I'm praising for my ministry. I'm praising for my children. I'm praising for my health. 
I'm praising for my sanity. I'm praising for my marriage. I'm praising for my breakthrough. I'm praising for my finances. I'm praising for my debt cancellation miracle. Give him a praise if you can. Come and work with me. I need another 15 minutes, I think. If you don't work with me, we're going to stretch it for a half an hour. (laughs) Come and tell somebody, tell somebody. I know it should have killed me, but I'm still here. Come on, come on, have that thing. You want to tell them? I know it should have killed me, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Come on, tell them. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I know the devil meant it for evil, but God is turning it around for my good. Come on. Uh, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I know what it feels like to be shipwrecked. I guess you too. I know what it feels like to be put down. I know what it feels like to be looked down on, to be bullied. (laughs) You kind of feel that it's no use. They're looking down on you, wishing for your demise. Some of you have been shipwrecked. You know what it feels like. Sit alone and you cry and you weep. Girl, you've been shipwrecked. Mm. And when that wasn't enough, you got snake bit. (sighs) Don't you understand the devil hit you? Ah, you have to endure false accusations. They lied on you. Come on, sneak bit. Mm. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't know, but they formed an opinion about you. <laughs> and now you sit there full of unforgiveness and bitterness. My goodness, because of that, all that stuff in your life, they've diagnosed you with cancer, high blood pressure, arthritis. Girl, you've been snake bit. <laughs> I see, I know, I know, I know what it feels like to be bit by the serpent, but I also know what it feels like to shake that snake off into the fire. Hallelujah. Mm, Yeah. Somebody listening to this message right now. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It should have killed you. I know it should have killed you. You know, If the devil had his way, you'd be dead. You know, if some people had the ability to carry out their intentions, you'd be dead. (laughs) Come on, I dare you. Just reach over and touch three people. Just reach over and touch three people. Tell them, I'm still here. Come on, tell them, I'm still here. (laughs) Tell them, I'm still here. (laughs) Listen, listen, listen. You ought to tell them, I'm still here because God has a plan for my life. You ought to tell them, I'm still here because God has a plan for my life. And I'm still here because God has a destiny for my life. If you believe it, tell somebody, tell somebody. You ought to tell them I'm here because God has the destiny for my life and I'm going to fulfill my destiny. If you're going to fulfill your destiny that God has over your life, raise your hand and give God a praise. We're going to kill that snake. We're going to kill that snake of cancer. We're going to kill that snake of arthritis, sugar diabetes, 
Ah, we're going to kill that snake that was assigned to take down your children. Mm, we're going to kill him. We're going to kill him. We're going to shake him off in the fire. We're going to kill that snake that's been assigned to destroy your finances. Come on, shout with me. We're going to kill that snake that was assigned to destroy your marriage, your ministry. We're going to kill it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, Ah, stand with me if you would. Stand with me if you would. Come on, I want you just to shake. Shake off that thing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has your miracle here tonight. Whatever it is, Tonight, it's going to be killed. We're going to throw it in the fire. The Holy Ghost fire is in this house.